thank you very much <laughs> for the introduction. Um, I feel like the the previous presentations have truly uh, laid the foundation uh, for our study. Uh, we have listened to how um, our touch habits have changed uh, during the pandemic and how uh, we can and have uh, turned to um, vicarious touch um, for a little bit of comfort during these times of, uh, of social distancing. And we were also introduced to the concept of uh, interpersonal space. And now we're going to be exploring um, all of these topics throughout uh, the day. Uh, but for now, <laughs> we're going to be uh, talking about how uh, boundaries uh, of interpersonal space and the way we perceive um, vicarious affective touch uh, have been affected uh, by um, our perceived threat levels from uh, COVID-19. Um, as we have previously discussed uh, earlier, uh, interpersonal space uh, is the area surrounding our bodies in which we feel that we can comfortably interact with other individuals. Uh, now here, um, comfortably uh, might be a very key word uh, and uh, something that we can indeed discuss uh, at the end of the, the, the presentation because um, such stimuli that we previously perceive as pleasant uh, might under certain uh, circumstances uh, activate uh, defensive responses within that, that peripersonal space. Um, but for now, let's, let's stick to interpersonal space. Um, now with transmission of COVID-19 being significantly and negatively uh, linked to um, interpersonal space, social distancing rules have been put into place. And um, one of the many tolls the, the pandemic has had on, uh, on mental health is a significant increase uh, in health anxiety, which might manifest itself uh, in this case as, as a fear of catching or spreading the virus. And this fear of catching or spreading the virus uh, may have led to a, a fear of close contact um, with, with other individuals as a consequence um, of which there might have been changes to um, our preferred boundaries uh, of, of interpersonal space. Um, interpersonal space preferences have been reported by, by several studies um, before us. Um, so preferred IPS has been reported to indeed have grown larger during, uh, during the pandemic and have been predicted, reported to have uh, been predicted uh, by COVID anxiety. Um, also, uh, preferred uh, interpersonal space has been reported to be affected by perceived risk, but not objective risk um, from COVID, and has been found to be reduced um, for avatars who are wearing face masks um, or gloves um, when compared to those uh, who are not. Um, but another interesting finding uh, was that preferred IPS was predicted neither by perceived vulnerability to disease, um, which was uh, not COVID specific, or perceived severity um, of the current uh, COVID situation. Um, another consequence uh, of COVID anxiety that we investigated uh, is the way we perceive interpersonal touch. Um, Social distancing rules have been linked to a reduction in the ability to engage in, in interpersonal touch, um, which in turn resulted in a, in a deprivation, a self-reported deprivation um, of touch, which uh, in turn altered the way we perceive uh, touch. Now, under normal uh, circumstances, uh, soft stroking to hairy skin um, is perceived to be uh, pleasant. Uh, that is uh, CT optimal uh, touch. And this is also true for vicarious uh, effective touch. Uh, indeed, greater touch deprivation has been uh, linked to an increased uh, perceived pleasantness of effective, of both effective and non-effective vicarious touch. Um, now here, the pressing question I think would be, 
when does a, a soft touch or a gentle caress become something threatening? Could it be that COVID anxiety led to a wariness of, of social touch such that it activates this previously pleasantly experienced stimuli, now activates a defensive reaction within our interpersonal space and is thus experienced as less pleasant? These were the, uh, the questions that motivated um, our study design. Um, our aim, uh, again, was to investigate the effect of real and perceived threat of COVID-19 on the changes of boundaries of interpersonal space and uh, pleasantness, perceived pleasantness of vicarious social touch. We predicted that COVID anxiety would be associated with an increase in fear of interpersonal contact and touch, um, which would be associated with an expanded boundary uh, of interpersonal space, which would in turn result in a reduced pleasantness of vicarious uh, affective touch. Um, this was an online study, uh, which had uh, 100 participants uh, in, in total. And the first task the participants performed was, um, was an implicit, implicit measure of interpersonal space. Uh, the participants were, um, were asked to listen uh, to approaching sounds um, of footsteps um, and were told to press stop whenever they felt uncomfortable with the distance between themselves and the person approaching. And it sounded something like this. Um, within this approaching sound task, we also asked participants uh, that they press stop when they felt like they could touch the person that was approaching to them. So we also measured um, a reaching uh, distance, uh, let's, let's say. Um, and, and of course, greater reaction times indicated a smaller um, boundary of interpersonal space. And uh, the second main task, that the participants performed was the vicarious uh, effective touch task. Participants viewed uh, a video clip of someone's forearm uh, being uh, stroked um, by another person's hand. And the stroking was at uh, both at optimal speed and at suboptimal speed. Um, and the participants were asked to imagine that they were being touched like this by, um, by a close friend or family member whom they share a household with um, and were then asked uh, to rate the, the comfort level, the pleasantness and the likability uh, of touch. This was repeated um, again uh, when participants were asked to imagine that they were being touched uh, like this uh, by someone who is not um, in their household. Um, and in, in addition to these main tasks that I've talked about, we had questionnaires. Um, I'm going to be talking about the most uh, important uh, of them, um, one of which is perceived coronavirus threat uh, questionnaire, which we used to assess um, perceived threat from, from COVID-19, which included questions like, uh, thinking about coronavirus makes me feel threatened, or um, I feel stressed around others because I fear that I will catch the, the coronavirus. And to assess uh, fear of touch, we adapted nine items from the touch experiences and attitudes questionnaire um, to assess whether participants feel comfortable or uncomfortable about interpersonal touch with, uh, with family members or friends outside uh, of their household or strangers. Um, and to ascertain 
actual risk uh, from uh, actual risk to COVID, uh, we collected demographic data uh, and asked for the existence of uh, of existing um, uh, health conditions that might increase uh, vulnerability to COVID nineteen. All right. Um, to look at the, the first portion um, of our uh, diagram here, we ask the question, does real and perceived COVID threat predict fear of touch? Um, the predictor variables um, were scores from uh, the, the perceived threat questionnaire, COVID rumination scale, and short health anxiety inventory. Um, this was for the perceived COVID threat and for real uh, risk, uh, we, we looked at age uh, as, a, as a predictor. And the dependent variable was um, uh, the, the fear of touch questionnaire scores. When we look at the whole sample, age was the only significant predictor. When we look at the UK sample, and um, it's, it's, it's fair to assume that the, the, the sample was divided uh, health and health between uh, the U UK sample and the, the German sample. The UK sample, um, indeed, the perceived COVID threat uh, was found to be significantly predictive uh, of fear of touch. And when we look at the German sample, our regress regression model was uh, non-significant. Um, moving on uh, to the second part uh, of our diagram, we asked, um, whether real and perceived COVID threat, health anxiety, and fear of touch predict performance um, on uh, the interpersonal space task. Again, our predictor variables were perceived uh, threat from COVID-19, rumination scale, fear of interpersonal touch, and again, um, uh, short health anxiety inventory. Uh, and the dependent variable was the the time it took for the participants to feel uncomfortable with the distance between themselves and the, the person approaching to them. Um, and again, when we look at the whole sample, indeed, uh, perceived threat came out to be significantly predictive um, of, um, of this distance for feeling uncomfortable. So with increasing levels of perceived threat, uh, the boundary of interpersonal space, indeed, uh, got larger. Um, now, one interesting finding, um, and something I believe we can uh, we can discuss in the end, was these cultural differences that that we found. Um, do you remember that we also measured the reaching task, right? Um, but what's in, what's what's interesting here is that with the UK cohort. Um, the, the difference between the reaching task and the interpersonal space task is positive, meaning that the UK cohort in, on, on average uh, felt uncomfortable before they could touch the approaching person. But with the German cohort, this is reversed. So they, they, they do feel uncomfortable, but after uh, they feel like they can touch the approaching person. Um, when we look at um, um, the results from our regression models uh, for the UK cohort, uh, perceived threat, again, is predictive for the distance for feeling uncomfortable. But for the German cohort, age is predictive for this distance. Uh, so real risk was predictive. Um, as for the average uh, vicarious touch ratings, we performed um, repeated uh, measures, ANOVA, and found a significant effect uh, of, of speed, um, so optimal and suboptimal speed, significant effect of person, uh, outsider or from household, and a significant effect of rating, so comfort rating, pleasantness rating, and, uh, and likability rating. Uh, we then looked at uh, the association uh, between perceived uh, threat from COVID and ratings um, of vicarious touch um, and found that 
uh, contrary to our expectations, increased perceived threat from COVID was associated with an increased pleasantness, comfort, and likability rating for both optimal and non-optimal household touch. And again, contrary to our, um, our predictions, um, perceived threat did not predict uh, ratings of, um, of pleasantness, comforts, or likability of non-household touch. Um, so to come to the last portion, um, of our diagram, we asked, does real and perceived COVID threat and fear of touch predict the perceived pleasantness um, of vicarious affective touch? And again, our predictive variables were um, perceived threat, rumination, fear of touch, and health anxiety. And um, as for our dependent variables, the first model we looked at was um, for the average pleasantness ratings for household touch, which was um, for which we combined uh, optimal and suboptimal uh, speeds. And for the second model, we looked at the average pleasantness ratings for non-household touch. For this first model, um, when we look at the whole sample, uh, perceived threat um, was indeed uh, predictive um, for, for household touch. So with increased uh, threat, perceived threat, um, there was an increased uh, pleasantness rating um, for, uh, for household touch. Um, and for the second model, age, um, so real risk was, was a predictor. Um, this was for, for the whole sample. Now, if we take a look at the cultural differences for the UK sample, the first model, the household model uh, came out uh, non-significant. Um, but for the for the German cohort, uh, COVID rumination scores um, were predictive. Um, so perceived threat was predictive um, of of pleasantness ratings for household touch. But in uh, in in neither of the uh, uh, samples, uh, outsider touch uh, came out as significant. Um, so a brief summary. <laughs> uh, from the German cohort, real risk, and from the UK cohort, perceived threat. Uh, did uh, result in, not result in, but significantly was as associated with a larger and expanded boundary of interpersonal space. Uh, perceived threat was significantly linked to an increased pleasantness of household touch, and real risk uh, was linked to um, a reduced pleasantness of outsider touch. Um, and uh, as a next step, we are, we're still in the midst of this project, I would say. And as a next step, we would like to perform a mediation analysis and, and look at whether reaction times on, on the interpersonal space task mediates this relationship between perceived threat from COVID-19 and the changes in, in the way we perceive the pleasantness of touch. And I believe that it is it for me. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much, Yasmin. That was a really wonderful talk. That was really clear. And um, you definitely got some interesting results there. Um, we've already had some uh, comments on your presentation. I think the footsteps um, really <laughs> intrigued people. So uh, Kat Fudd said, uh, spooky footstep <laughs> task. I love it. And Connor Haggerty said, that's a really cool stimulus. Um, no, I really like the footsteps. That was a really interesting um, stimulus to hear, even just, just to hear it here in our, in our homes and work, things like this, mm -hmm. because you do feel that as it gets louder, it gets more intimidating. Mm -hmm. So and I think people find that that's even more intimidating now um, mm -hmm. in the, the time of COVID. I, I really do feel that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's so interesting. It's a really nice stimulus to use. Um, and you just touched on um, international differences there. Um, so I have a quick uh, question before maybe other questions uh, um, come in. Um, but why do you think they are, they are, there are these differences between the um, UK and German populations that you have? 
I think it has a lot to do with uh, the, 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 the dates during which we actually collected the data. So the UK data was collected earlier than the German data. And during the times we collected the UK data, they were going through um, a very difficult time. Uh, so there was a, a very strong, a strict lockdown in place and uh, the mutants were arising. But during the times where we were, when we were collecting the German uh, data, things had already begun to uh, relax a bit in Germany uh, with the with the prospect of vaccinations um, and uh, and uh, less strict lockdowns. Uh, I, I think this uh, this is the major reason why we we observe these differences. No, it's interesting then that you actually see kind of an evolution then of the um, mm. of the way it's happened, mm. um, and that you get different effects possibly at different times. Um, so that'd be really interesting, I think, to follow up on as well. Um, yeah. That's um, really good. And um, it's interesting that you found as well that increased threat was associated with the increase in these, these effective um, behaviours like pleasantness and comfort and liking. Mm -hmm. um, can you go in a bit more into detail? Why do you think that was? Um, I think uh, what, what's really important here is that we found a significant effect with household touch, but no effect with, uh, with outsider touch. So I think in, in this context, uh, outsider touch, stranger touch is never pleasant. Uh, but with greater touch deprivation, uh, I think people tend to um, really turn to um, for comfort to, uh, to members of their household um, for, for interpersonal touch. And that's why it is um, uh, perhaps, you know, differently uh, than, uh, than, than previously would have uh, been perceived. It is perceived as, as more pleasant. But mm -hmm. again, uh, um, what uh, I think we, we could have done is uh, in this study is, uh, is perhaps uh, add um, as, a, as a baseline value, uh, I think it's called an, an STQ, so social touch questionnaire. Mm -hmm. the, the, Way, the way per people perceived the touch before the pandemic and you know, so to be able to elucidate the differences between before and after uh, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. No, that's interesting that basically it's yeah, who you, you live with, um, you still want to be very close to them um, mm -hmm. with minor threat, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a question um, that's come in. Um, we had another comment from uh, Kat Fott that's saying, congratulations, uh, Yasmin. That was a great study and a lovely presentation, which we do all agree with. And um, there's a question from um, Charlotte Krahe. It is, could a positive relationship between perceived COVID threat and pleasantness and likability of household touch be linked to comfort through seeking to comfort seeking through touch. Did that make sense? Yeah. Um, maybe I can read it. Myself. Yeah, it's, it's on the um, YouTube. Uh, it's on the mm -hmm. YouTube um, website, mm -hmm. and so it's the relationship between the COVID threat and then the um, the perceived pleasantness and likability. Is that linked directly to the comfort through seeking touch? So, do we need to? I guess what she's maybe saying is that do do we, do we seek comfort? in the, these kind of positive feedbacks that we have, even though we are under threat? Mm. We, do we actually go out to seek comfort? Um, just a second, please. Hmm. Um, I, I, I definitely think, uh, again, this, this has a lot um, to do with it. Um, the, the, these times of, of social distancing have, have led to um, a, a great uh, deprivation in, in terms of touch. And this, this hunger for touch, um, I believe, um, could definitely be uh, an, another mediator um, for, the, for the way we, um, we, we perceive um, um, the, the pleasantness of vicarious touch uh, with, with increasing levels. Um, um, of threat, because um, I, I would assume with with greater uh, perceived threat comes um, perhaps a greater level of social isolation, um, mm -hmm. thus and thus a, a, a greater deprivation. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess that any comfort that you can gain from it is is of great benefit. Indeed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've had another question as well um, from uh, Jean Barlow. And um, mm -hmm. it is, do you think that the media time um, speaking about COVID has um, 
and impact on the UK population? Has that increased the fear of touch? Um, because obviously the media coverage is very, very mm. large. And so do you think that has actually increased this fear for good or for bad? Um, I think this is a this is a very interesting uh, question. Uh, I, I remember uh, this is, reminded me of this uh, another talk uh, I, I listened to. Uh, it was the first uh, Social Bridges uh, conference uh, about how um, governments can actually induce this this fear of uh, and uh, how uh, across cultures. Um, the way governments uh, can do this differs, um, whether um, to, to proceed with a, a pro-social appeal, for example, or from, from a deontological um, approach. And um, to be honest, I, I, I am not familiar with, uh, with the way um, the, the, the UK um, government, which, which, which approach they took um, uh, in terms of uh, getting people to actually adhere uh, to these measures, uh, but indeed, um, I, I truly, truly believe that the the media coverage um, has indeed uh, increased this this fear of touch, and I think this was um, uh, this was in intentional. Something mm -hmm. uh, intentional. Do you think it's a good thing then? Uh, because obviously, having the fear of touch means that we don't have, we don't touch each other in public and it will decrease the risk of transmitting mm -hmm. and the virus. However, I think it could maybe in, um, have a big impact in the future mm -hmm. that if mm -hmm. this fear of touch is not removed, then this is not going to be good. Yeah, I, I think the governments uh, chose their battles. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, in, indeed will we'll have to be um, uh, dealing with the, the mental health tolls uh, COVID has had um, uh, once the pandemic uh, has uh, perhaps uh, disappeared a little bit. Um, I, I don't think the effect um, uh, of, of mental health will, uh, will go away uh, as soon. Mm. No, I, I absolutely agree. I think this is definitely some, it's a long-term um, consequence of the pandemic that we're all going to have to live with. Um, unfortunately, the, the, the mental health effects um, are widespread, international and um, quite devastating in some cases. And it's something that I think everyone and all our countries and governments are going to have to address. And it's studies like this, like yours and all the others that are presented here today, that really um, can provide data for this. And it underlines the importance of touch, but it also underlines the importance of having this international community looking at it and also getting data from different countries because if you've used clearly shown today that it can be different either maybe due to the country the cultural reasons the way the media and the government portray touch mm -hmm. and um the, the pandemic itself um but also yeah <laughs> the timing as well and what's going on at that exact time can change and hopefully one day it is going to change for the better mm -hmm. um but yeah but we shall see. <laughs> Fingers crossed, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, so we can, um, we can wrap up the morning session here. Um, I'd just like to um, thank you so much again, uh, Yasmin. It's, that was a really, truly interesting talk and I really look forward to it all being published as well and uh, good luck uh, with the write-up and everything.